Comparison is the thief of joy, is the expression? Yes. I, I didn't know that quote when I lived in LA uh, when I first got there, but I was on this sitcom. We were on a sitcom, right? Incredible. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm on television. This is amazing. And the people that I was with, who are great people, they were, they were all reading The Hollywood Reporter. And they would read this and they'd get upset. Oh, why is she getting this? Oh, why is this happening? Why are they on Thursday night at 8 o'clock? Why? And I'd go, hey, I go, that's the devil's rag. I go, what are you reading? That's what I would call it, the devil's yeah, rag. That's so good. And I go, guys, last time I checked, I'm on fucking TV. Yeah. Okay? I'm on television. You're on TV. We're on a TV show. And you're complaining that other people are on better TV shows or on TV shows that have better ratings. This is crazy. Yeah. Like you're looking for reasons why your life sucks when you're in one of the best positions that a person could ever be in in your line of work. You're literally on a successful television show. This is so crazy. There were a lot of questions today, people trying to figure out what the secret to life is, to a long and happy life. That is easy because it's so simple. What is you it? You don't have a lot of envy, you don't have a lot of resentment, you don't overspend your income, you stay cheerful in spite of your troubles. You deal with reliable people and you do what you're supposed to do. And all these simple rules work so well to make your life better. And they're so trite. How old were you when you figured this out? About seven. <laughs> I could tell that some of my older people were a little bonkers. I've always been able to recognize when other people were a little bonkers. And it helped me because there's so much irrationality in the world and I've been thinking about it for a long time. The more time you spend on social media, the more negatively it impacts your mood. Everyone knows that we have good days and bad days. But what do I see when I log on to social media? What I see is one person had a birthday party today. Look at how many people are having fun. And the next day, I see another birthday party where everyone is having fun. And the next day, I see another birthday party where everyone is having fun. Now, each person only gets one birthday a year. But every time I log on to social media, what rises to the top is what is liked the most, where people are having the most fun. Does that kind of make sense? So every time I log on, what I'm seeing is the best moment of 365 lives. And then what it gives me the impression of is everyone is out there having fun all of the time. And I only get one birthday a year, but everyone else is having so much fun all the time. So it creates this false sense that everyone out there is living this perfect life. Whereas my life is just ordinary. And in the face of a perfect life, ordinary lives feel depressing. Personal finance is one of those subjects that can be very sensitive to a lot of people. Especially nowadays with social media, it's hard not to compare yourself to others. It's hard to just stay in your lane, working towards your goals, focused, because guess what? Whether you like it or not, it's only a matter of time until the algorithm shows you people displaying their wealth, or at least what appears to be wealth, right? And when that happens, unbeknownst to us, it can make you feel like you are fallen behind, like you're not doing enough. And in the worst case scenarios, it can make you feel like you're a failure, regardless of how much money you make or how much you've accomplished. So a little while ago, I was reading this book over here, and I'm sure you've heard of it. If not, I strongly recommend it to you. I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description if you're interested. But there's a story here from a very famous guitar player. And this guitar player was touring the United States, doing well with his band, when suddenly this band kicked him out of the group. This guitar player decided, you know, I am gonna become so successful that this man is going to regret kicking me out of their group. So this guy did just that. He worked very hard. He overcame all the challenges that came with starting over. And in fact, he went on to tour the United States with his new band. He was selling millions of records and he was crushing it. Well, here's the thing and spoiler alert. This guy, his name was Dave Mustaine. And according to the book, in one interview, he was almost in tears and telling the interviewer that despite of how much money he made or how much success he was able to achieve, he was never able to feel like he was successful. And you might be thinking to yourself, but well, that's crazy, right? Like how can this guy that 
achieved to sell millions of copies. He went on to found Megadeth with it, which is a huge heavy metal band. Well, this guy was comparing himself to the success of the band that originally kicked him out. And unfortunately, in this case scenario, this band was Metallica. And Metallica, as you or may or may not know, is probably the biggest, as far as, far as I know, the biggest heavy metal band that's ever existed. And if you are into heavy metal, let me know, correct me, please. But definitely the point here is that Metallica went on to become much more successful than the band that the older guy founded, Dave Mustaine and Megadeth. Now, imagine this scenario being on our phones all the time. We could have a house, we could have a great car, we could have a great family, we could have all these things around us and have achieved all this success, but then if we compare ourselves to somebody else that has more money, that maybe that ha takes more vacations, all of that works against us. Now, in this video, I want to dive into a short article I found online to help you see the big picture again, to gain confidence and feel better, not so much that you give up on your dreams for financial independence, but so that you can give yourself credit of how far you've come, so you can stop beating yourself up and know that you are on your way to financial freedom and security with confidence. So this article, by the way, is originally based on one of my favorite financial personalities out there, Humphrey Yang, which, hey, shout out to you, Humphrey. I learned a lot from you and keep crushing it. So the first thing that is in the article is you don't try to signal your wealth. So using big ticket items to flaunt how much you've got is a zero sum game of winners and losers. If you're buying a Lamborghini, you're probably just trying to show outsiders that you're successful enough to buy a $300,000 car. So our friend Humphrey says, hey, as opposed to doing that, instead of borrowing large sums of money to buy expensive things and elevate your social status, you should be seeking freedom and peace of mind through building wealth, which he says is a positive sum game where every day, everybody can win. Somebody used this concept very well, which was Nabal Ravikant. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he is an investor, a philosopher, and he was saying that life is not a zero sum game. Life is a way that everybody can succeed. If you succeed in your business, it doesn't mean that I have to lose. I can also succeed in my, my own business. And when we try to signal our wealth, the way I see this is it also comes from insecurity. When we try to signal to others how much wealth we have by buying expensive things, a lot of it comes down to psychological reasons and insecurities. Maybe when we were younger, we were deprived of money so much that now when we grow up, we want to show the world that we don't lack what we did in the past. And that in turn makes us feel better. So let me know in the comments. Do you know somebody that signals it well so much? I know certainly a lot of people that do that. The second indicator that lets us know that you were doing much better than you think is you have an emergency fund of at least $2,000. Says you right on track if you have two thousand dollars rainy day fund that you can tap. The truth is unexpected bills will pop up. Young cites a bankrupt article saying fifty-seven percent of Americans cannot afford a one thousand dollar emergency expense. Having at least double in that high yield savings account will mean that you're ahead of most Americans. And he adds that it's ideal to shoot for a cushion worth three to six months of expenses. So there's a lot of things to consider here, and I'm gonna tell you here as somebody that. I had no idea what an emergency fund was up until five years ago. Having been on the other side of the fence where I was working, living paycheck to paycheck, calculating how many hours exactly I had to work at JCPenney, at McDonald's, at a bank where I used to be a supervisor at, I had to make sure that I was doing the math correctly just so that I could afford food, just so that I could afford gas, so that I can buy my books for college. And at this point, of course, when you are living paycheck to paycheck, when you are just getting by, you have no idea what an emergency fund is, right? And the one unexpected repair from your car can set you back two to three months. I know what that feels like. Now, one of the things that I've learned over the years, of course, this is something also that you think about as your income increases and you start having a little bit more of a disposable income, you have to learn a little bit more about, okay, how can I not struggle with all these unexpected bills? And that's the reason why an emergency fund can become so helpful because an emergency fund 
turns what could have been an emergency into an inconvenience. Now, personally, for an emergency fund, I like to keep three to six months of expenses. Now, we keep that in an account like Marks by Goldman Sachs or SoFi. I'm going to leave a link in the description to these two organizations down in the, in the bottom if you're looking for a high yield savings account. I also invite you to watch the reviews I made here on the channel. So personally, I think a high yield savings account nowadays specifically is the best way to go, whether you are keeping $1,000 or $2,000 or three to six months worth of expenses. At the end of the day, let's remember the big picture here that if you have disposable income and ability to build an emergency fund, you are doing better than 50% of Americans who cannot afford a $1,000 emergency expense, my friend. The third indicator that you are doing better than you think is you are able to meet your spending and savings targets. Yang sees this as evidence that you have defined financial goals and a budget for a way to track your expenses. If you're making $75,000 annually and spending $60,000, then you should be making a plan for that extra 15,000. You should be reviewing expenses to identify areas to cut back and identifying ways, ways to earn more income. One of the biggest realizations was in 2018, 19 timeframe, when my wife and I, we decided to, in order to move on with our lives, we needed to get out of debt. We were in $215,000 in debt and it was outrageous. One of the best hacks in personal finance is setting financial targets. Like, what are you working towards? How much are you looking to increase your income by this year? How much are you looking to make in your side hustle this month, next month? How much are you looking to save this month? How much are you looking to pay off in debt in the next three months, six months? And this was absolutely mind blowing in, in my personal finance journey. When you start setting financial goals, it forces you to budget your money and understand where the money is coming from and also where the money is going. So if you have disposable income, then, hey, is that going towards savings? Is that, is that going towards the credit card? Is that going towards a loan that you have? So personally, one of the best things that I can do for, or that I could do for myself was getting out of debt. And by the way, if you are someone that is deep in debt, if you are someone that is struggling with debt and you have a stable source of income, I encourage you to sign up with the form in the link in the description. I'm currently developing a debt-free course that is gonna walk you step-by-step, step, one through 10, 10 actionable steps that are gonna help you get out of debt for once and for all. Not only are we gonna go over my personal experience overcoming $215,000 in debt with my wife, also we are gonna go over, hey, how to budget. We're gonna go over how to increase your income because you can only decrease your expenses so much. Budgeting, we're gonna go over the best strategy to pay off debt, how to consolidate credit cards, and most importantly, how to address the mindset. The mindset is the biggest thing that we need to address when we are getting out of debt because it can be very easy to just get sidetracked and not pay attention to our goals. So check the link in the description if you're interested in this. I'm going to be sending you an email once it's ready, or you can also contact me on Instagram and I'll reach out to you. The fourth indicator that you're doing much better than you think is you live below your means. Now, before I read this, I wanna mention here that when you are living below your means, it means that you are having at least a decent income to cover all your expenses. Sometimes, and again, I have been there, sometimes you just can't help it but to rely on credit cards. Even if you are budgeting, even if you are know exactly where every penny is going, it's difficult sometimes to just like make it to the next check and then you have to rely on credit cards to bridge the gap between your current and next month. If you are already living below your means and you have at least a little bit of disposable income, that means something to be grateful for already. Well, it's not exactly glamorous to spend less than you make, this is one of the number one ways to increase your wealth over time because it frees, more, it frees up more money for investing and paying down debt. Smart spending also gives you the flexibility and freedom to entertain choices such as a career change and retiring earlier with a smaller net, with a smaller nest egg, according to the 4% rule. One of the things that I've learned from Dave Ramsey is your income is your biggest wealth creator. And this is something that I wasn't aware of 10, 15 years ago, because 10, 15 years ago, guess what I was doing? One of the things that I would do was if I had a little bit of uh, money left in my checking account, I would just go to the store and like buy something down. Like I would buy a pair of shoes, I would buy a piece of clothing, things that were liabilities and not really assets, right? So I was just blowing my money. 
And I don't really blame myself. I don't feel bad for myself. It's one of those things that you do what you can based on what you know. And at the time, I wasn't well versed in personal finance, or at least as much as I am nowadays. The reason I'm saying this is because sometimes we are living below our means or we have enough money. We are making enough money to live below our means. But because we are making stupid purchases, that can really push the threshold and push us above our means, if that makes any sense. So we have to be careful and that's why it's important to have a budget. And by the way, if you are interested in having a budget, click the link in the description where you can download a budget for free. The fifth indicator that you are doing much better than you think is that you keep your debt manageable. And I love this part because, hey, I am all about the debt, right? I'm all about paying off the debt. I'm all about paying off credit cards every single month. And that requires a certain level of focus, discipline, high interest credit card and other types of consumer debt can put serious debt in the finances of otherwise savvy adults. According to Credit Bureau of Experian, the average credit card balance on its database grew 10% to 6,000 in quarter three of 2023 from the same period in 2022. But if you do have some debt, if you're able to manage those payments every single month and not really miss any payments, that shows that you are doing well financially. So it's not just about managing the debt. It's about paying it off. It's about getting rid of it. So if you're someone that willingly and consciously, if you have the money, if you have the cash, you pay for things cash, but you decide not to and use credit cards, I think that's a very smart move. Like personally, my wife and I do that. I made a video on the Amazon Prime credit card not too long ago. And by the way, if you are a frequent Amazon shopper, absolutely the Amazon Prime credit card is the best thing that you can use because you're just going to be racking up those points. I got $1,500 back last year from using the Amazon card. I used that towards Christmas presents, which was a nice bonus. I'm going to leave a link in the description for the Amazon Prime credit card if you are interested in learning more about that. My wife and I were $215,000 in debt. We're managing the debt, but we're very deep, right? So it's not just about managing the debt. It's also about making sure that you are able to get out of it. Because once you get out of it, you're going to be able to move on with your life. You're going to be able to build a family, grow your family, invest in a business. One of the things that I recommend in my debt-free course, by the way, link in the description if you're interested in that, is reducing the number of payments maybe to one also reducing your interest rate and one of the things that you can do this is by doing a balance transfer one of the good ways to do a balance transfer is to chase freedom and i'm going to leave a link in the description if you're looking for a good balance transfer credit card now we're going to get to one of my favorite ones here the sixth indicator that you are doing well financially is that you set your own standards for success this boils down to avoiding the temptation to compare yourself to others and feel like you don't have enough. If you're able to gauge your own financial success based on your own standards and beliefs, I think that this is a huge sign that you're doing well financially. Now, here's something I want to say here because I, I, I love this. You set your own standards for success. Many times we go about life, we are chasing the dollar, maybe we're chasing the house. And trust me, I used to be someone that used to chase the dollar. When I was about 18, 19 years old, I saw somebody make $120,000 a year. And... I'm telling you, this is one of those things that I, as I was going through college, as I was going through engineering school, one of my goals was I need to reach 120,000. Like that was my target. Along the years, of course, as an engineer, you develop, you can experience. And once I reached that, I was like, okay, wow, I've had this dream for like the last like six, seven years. This is great. And I realized, you know, like there's always like the next step, like the goalpost just keeps moving. Okay. So what's next? So what's next? 200, 300, 500, a million? So it's a never ending game. And if you don't know what success means to you, you can fall in the trap of always maybe chasing something that is not worth chasing. And you realize this later down the road. Now, of course, nowadays success for me is being able to save money for the future, is being able to provide for my family, is being able to spend time with my daughter, with my wife, being able to relax and watch, a sh and watch a show with my wife at 10, 11 p.m. after my daughter goes to bed, is being able to give back to my parents, is being able to share the wisdom and knowledge that I've gained here over the years with you guys. But here's the thing. It doesn't mean that I'm just going to sit back, relax, and that's it for life, right? There's always other goals that we set for ourselves. And I think that we all need that. We all need those goals to look forward to. So it's not so much about realizing that, yes, I am successful. And also you are successful in your own way. Like the decisions that we made in the past 
have led us to where we are today. And if you set the right goals and if you made the right decisions, then you may be successful now. And even if you did it, it doesn't mean that you can't be in the future. The point here is that there is always a future. There is always goals that we are setting for ourselves. But as long as we ourselves are setting our own standards and not so much living by the standards of others, because that can drive us to resentment. It can drive us to frustration, anger, when we are living by the standards or the measures of other people, what they expect you to do. Now, the seventh indicator that you are doing well financially is that you build your net worth steadily, right? It's not like hockey stick, right? It's like steadily, steadily wins the race. And people doing well financially see consistent growth in their wealth over time as investments build up and compound. Don't panic as the market goes through their durations. John compares it to the dips and peaks of his YouTube viewership. Your net worth may ebb and flow throughout the year. In fact, that's completely normal, especially if you have investments. But as long as it's trending in the right direction, you would argue that you are doing well financially. When it comes to YouTube, YouTube is all about the views, the average view duration, and also, of course, the revenue and the income that you make about it. If you are a YouTuber that uses YouTube, not only, of course, to connect with people, but also as a business, YouTube is not like consistent, right? It's not like it just goes up exponentially. If it goes up slowly over time, that means that something is working, something you're being consistent. And for the longest time, it took me forever to understand this about YouTube. And one of the things that I did recently was I started trying a bunch of different content and the viewership did spike at one point. But then because I didn't know much about, okay, how do I keep this going? The thing just dropped, right? So quote unquote, the viewership went up or quote unquote, as Yang mentioned, Yang mentions here, the wealth just goes up, skyrockets, but then because you don't know how to maintain that, it just absolutely dropped. Now, recently I've been focusing on high yield savings accounts, and this is a topic that you guys seem to like and you want to know more about it. So I'll, I keep sharing it, right? Like YouTube is a business. So I decided, okay, well, let's give the audience what they need and what they want. So the viewership started slowly going up and increasing, and this is sustainable in a sense, at least for the time being. So if you're, it's almost like the net worth, it's steadily increasing on YouTube from a YouTube perspective. So that's exactly what the angle means here. And I want to say here also in the grand scheme of wealth creation, our personal finance, as long as that we are trending better, that we are doing better, that we are increasing our income, that we're improving our skills, that we are in a better mental space, that we are getting rid of debt, as long as you are able to maybe give back a little more this year, or as long as you maybe you free up a little bit more of your time. Like, yes, you may be like making like maybe like two thousand, five thousand dollars less, but now you have a lot more free time. You have peace of mind. So all these indicators let us know that our wealth is steadily increasing, and your life is improving. So. With this being said, I don't want you to lose the big picture of how much you've accomplished throughout the years. I want you to realize that you are stronger than you think. I want you to know that you can do also much better. Don't just sit back, relax, and life is over, right? Like set new goals. If you don't feel motivated about life, if you feel like you're not passionate about life anymore, just set new goals. And I'm gonna leave this video with a quote that I learned not to learn go for the grass it's not greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. And if you think about life, about your marriage, about the relationship with, that you have with others, about maybe your job, grass is greener, not on the other side, but where you water it. With this being said, guys, thank you guys for being here. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Check the links in the description. And with that being said, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.